trying. So now I'll share my screen again for you. Oh shoot, Rachel. Yeah, no worries, Rachel. You'll be all right. We'll try to we'll try to do the best we can. This is uh this is the first first time I've I've done a PLC as well. So um I would ask for your patience and uh and understanding as we go through the process because I've I haven't done these before either. So we're all kind of flying by the seat of our pants as we go through this process. But I am excited to have everybody here. So um taking a look at today's session. So our goals um We've got kind of five specific goals is we want to establish a vision. We want to figure out what we're here to do in the PLC work. Um, I think it's really, really important that uh, you as rural Oregon teachers um, take the opportunity to learn from each other. Um, I think that everybody, um, we said this in the Rural Advisory Council meeting, that rural teachers experience patterns differently. And, and you've been, you've all been very open with sharing uh, what is going on in the schools that you're at and what you experience. And so um, it's really fun to see how people who experience patterns differently uh, adapt and adjust and, and kind of go through the process of, of removing barriers to implementation. That's our big thing is there's barriers. There's things that prevent us from implementing the curriculum. And so what are ways that we can be creative in, in, in getting rid of those barriers so that we can implement the curriculum itself? So we want, I, I would hope that you would learn from each other as we go through this process, because you're all engaged in the curriculum and you all run into different, different issues at times and can help each other with the process. Um, we'll introduce the problem of practice protocol. And then we'll plan kind of some uh, towards the end today. We'll we'll plan some of the volunteer work where we we'd love for people to actually bring those ideas forward. And and most of our time in the PLC uh, from this point forward will be spent problem solving, uh, talking with each other, and problem solving different problems of practice, things that you're having issues with. Um, and we'll go through that problem practice protocol. And then we'll kind of figure out where we go from there in the process. So that's kind of our goals for today's uh, day session and today's process. Um, I'll keep my chat up so that I can make sure if we've got anything going on. Um, I will also see if I can get my poll to pop up for you. So there's uh, a quick poll that should be coming up. Do you guys see that poll? Did it pop up for you? I'm hoping. Uh, there's just two quick questions. Um, and the first question is, were you able to attend the rural teacher focus group, uh, which we did, gosh, it feels like forever ago. We did one group. We had to cancel the second, unfortunately. Um, and then the second question is, have you attended any of the in-person workshops in Beaverton or some of the other locations that we just recently had? Awesome. So four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven. Awesome. Um, perfect. Okay, Pete, sweet. All right, so um, yeah, feel free to respond to those real quick and then we'll we'll figure out, we got one more participant to respond and we'll be good to go. Um, I kind of put that third option in there just because a lot of people, in, in especially in the, the rural Oregon areas don't really know what options and things are available. And so the rural focus group was just a group that we had, we got together um, as a as a group to just talk about you know what are what are some of the barriers to implement, implementation of the curriculum where where are you struggling what are the things you're struggling with and it was actually a really great group it was really uh, gave us a, some really good advice in the process so um, and then the in person stuff I'm glad that you've all heard that there's in person workshops um, some good news headed into the summer um, I know that. Uh, physics and biology are actually going to offer two sessions in the summer. They're going to offer, offer a session of one through three and then four through six. So they're actually going to offer um, what we did previously where, thank you to Bryce and Valerie were the two that contacted us and asked us to do some in-person workshops in different places. We were able to do one in Bend uh, and then one in uh, Newport, actually, which was awesome. So, um, but they've they've decided this summer that they want to offer both sessions um, and give people both 
sections of the information and be able to just get really involved in that. Cause I know the four through six doesn't get hit too hard in the summer and it hasn't been in the past. So really good news there is they're offering both sessions this next summer. So keep an eye out on the paid PD document because that'll come out pretty soon um, in terms of when that's available and, and what dates those are. So. Yeah. Thank you, Casey. The, the Newport one was really helpful. Good. That was really cool. Yeah. And they do have the dates, I think, confirmed for that. Yeah, I just went to, um, I was just in Portland for the all council meeting. Um, mm. it was, I think it was two weeks ago or something. And they were just kind of like narrowing down the times during that meeting. So I know they were, they were just trying to figure out where, what weeks would work for them. So we'll, um, I'm pretty confident they have them laid down, but we'll wait till they come out in that doc or or till I get the official okay to let everybody know when they when they are. So yeah, so um yeah, it's these are all options. So part of part of why I ask a couple of those things really is because um rural the rural side of patterns hasn't been given the attention that I feel that we feel like it deserves the attention that it needs in terms of uh, the the curriculum and how it works and the reality of teaching patterns in a rural school in a rural environment and so um, the focus group was really great to give us some of that information the in person workshops were great because I got to meet with some of you in person and just chat about your thoughts and feelings in the process for patterns. Um, and and we're hoping to have those types of conversations with other rural Oregon teachers. So please encourage anybody who's looking at it. I'm happy to meet with anybody um, in terms of their rural implementation. Um, I, I'm happy to meet with anybody and talk with them. I went to the IMESD conference and presented there actually of patterns and had some really good conversations and things like that. So um, I'm kind of the rural contact in the process. Um, I'm also the person who is kind of in charge of doing some stipends for you guys. So um, if you ever have any questions about those, um, we've been able to provide stipends to rural teachers uh, going to those in-person workshops, um, and that's been really good. So um, we'll be continuing that process as we go into the summer as well. So good news on that. Um, we do that for rural teachers only so that they can uh, help defray the cost a bit of, of being able to go to events and in-person workshops because it's not cheap to travel to Beaverton. So um, so yeah, lots of cool rural stuff going on. Um, I'll go ahead and stop sharing that poll. Close that out. Um, the Are you talking about... Brian, are you asking about the um, the dates for the summer? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, so um, you after I posted that, you talked about how they're just getting firmed up and pretty much answered yeah. the question. So thank you. Yeah, they just firmed them up in January. Um, I'm pretty confident they have them laid out. I just want to make sure I have the okay from Portland Metro STEM to to give out the dates. So um, once I have that, I can definitely share it with everybody too, so so that you can see it. All right. <laughs> Okay, so community more norms. Here's here's some of the things that um, we really want to be aware of in this process is um, pausing, listening, uh, being aware. Because we're gonna as as we go through this problem of practice protocol, um, a lot of it is about pausing and listening. Um, and someone's gonna bring something to you, and you have to understand that. Um, they're bringing it to you as a vulnerability, right? As teachers, we're all very sensitive uh, in how we teach and what we teach and we're passionate about it and we love it. And so when we have a problem, um, we're bringing it to other professionals in a way that we're hoping that uh, they will, they'll take care of it just like we love it, right? Like we're, we're gonna respect it. We're not gonna dismiss it and things like that. So just taking a moment to pause Take a moment to paraphrase what that person is saying so you make sure that you understand exactly what their, their problem is. Um, you can definitely ask probing questions. Um, I think that would be amazing to do, especially when we're doing the problem or practice protocol, because uh, you can learn a little bit more about what their environment is like, what their teaching is like, things like that before we start to throw ideas and things like that out. And then the other side of that is assume positive intentions. And um, 
I, I love that idea. I love that concept. Um, everyone is coming not just to complain and be negative. It's it's all positive intentions in this process. And so that's really what we're here for is we're here to lift each other up. We're here to support each other. And we're here to help provide uh, real life applicable solutions to problems of practice when it comes to uh, the patterns curriculum. Okay. So those are kind of our, our norms and the things that we want to do. So um, I will really quickly copy and paste the next, uh, the next thing we're going to do is in the idea capture tool. And so I will post this back in here real quick for us. Everyone, paste. Okay, so if you if you can do me a favor and go into that idea capture tool, um, these are quest these questions are going to be here. Um, these questions are here, so I'll just pull up that idea capture tool. So we've got quite a few people in there already, which is awesome. Um, if you've done any other types of PLCs or groups, a lot of the times we'll use this idea capture tool um, as a way to just keep our notes, <laughs> keep our keep our information, keep our notes. Um, I don't have cohort group assignments yet. I kind of wanted to do that uh, organically as we went through the process today, kind of figure out a way to, to bring people together in, in that manner. So with the idea capture tool, you've got... Um, We've got the parking lot question. So if there's something that you're is that's just itching to get out and you have a question, but it doesn't necessarily have to do with the question that we're on, feel free to put it in there. Um, if you want a follow-up email, you can just in parentheses like say email please or something like that. Um, so that'll uh, allow us the opportunity to be able to address any of those parking lot questions. So um, our first, I think we'll end up having three cohorts. It doesn't matter where we put our cohort stuff at this point, because we haven't quite created it. So feel free uh, down in this area to write wherever you would like. <laughs> um, so the first question that we have, just to get to know each other a little, oh, is it going to allow you edit access? Of course. Let's see. Anyone with the link? It's so scary to click that button. I know. See if that one lets it. I always run into that, like allow anybody. Share. If it's not letting you just um, put in that little request really quick and then I'll I'll just share it with everybody because it'll come up. Sweet. So if you'll share, if you'll do that little request, it'll pop in really fast for me. I love that. There we go. All right, share. Share. Sorry about that. I probably should have just went and clicked down on everybody's and made you all. Awesome. Let's see if I have anybody else. Looks like I've got everybody else set as editors. Are we okay there now, I think? <laughs> I think we've got everybody in there. Okay, so I see a lot of little dots there. There we go. Okay, so we are awesome. We are good to go. Um, so let's go. For me, Casey. I'm not sure why I sent a request. Did you get it? I did. You, will you refresh it real quick? I, okay. Because I've got you as an editor. Um. Oh, now it is. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. All right. Uh -huh. And we're not going to, um, we're not going to address these directly together. This is going to be one of our first, uh, our first ways that we can go out as a, as a group assignment and um, we'll be able to do that. So. Casey, I don't have access. Oh, Leah, sorry. It's okay. Do you want me to send a request again? I got gotcha. you. All 
All right. See if you can get in there, Leah. Should be able to access it now. Next day with Carissa, it's first day of second year schools, but use curriculum. Awesome. Uh, I haven't been added either. Okay, I'll get you, Rachel. Sorry about that. Thanks. Oh, there you go. You're right there. <laughs> Gotta love it. Sure. Is there anybody else? So still working on how long you've been implementing. So if anybody else can add that in there, that would be awesome. If you're not able to do it right now, I totally understand. <laughs> still a no-go for me. <laughs> oh, do, will you refresh it for me? I did. I'll try again. I know it took a second for um, Valerie's to kick in. Thank you for putting your names on there too. I appreciate that. I feel like, um, and I'm hoping you feel the same way in this process that I think, um, I'm hoping that you feel safe enough to, to share this outright. Um, if you don't, it is okay. <laughs> we totally understand that. So you don't necessarily have to always put your name. If you would, that helps me kind of address it. I may have to just say something anyway and be like, hey, who said this? So, so we'll just have those discussions. Brian, did you have a question or anything? You good? I just saw that you were un unmuted, so I didn't know if <laughs> I didn't know if you needed anything. No, I just forgot to mute myself. Oh, no worries. Okay. Um, Casey, sometimes yeah. I've had weird things with my Gmail. With oh, my school. gotcha. Can you try yeah. that one? Yep, I sure can. Okay. If it'll let me. I'm just going to send you a quick email with it real fast. I'm always the problem child, always. <laughs> That's okay. No worries. We'll get Jasmine access as well. Jasmine, welcome in. Done, and then I think I've got one more I might have to look at. See how we can do here. Awesome. So those of you that are done with question one, if you want to jump down to question two, some of you have already done that. You're jumping ahead of the game, no problem. But take a look at um, question number two and asking directly how how much of the patterns curriculum are you implementing? Are you like implementing with full fidelity, 100% fidelity? You're, you're following it as best as possible um, in the process. Are you kind of partially implementing, implementing it? Like maybe a unit here or a unit there um, that you are able to pull from patterns? Is it kind of piecemeal? Like I use instead of units, full units that I'm using, is it um, is it like lessons? Do I do different lessons? Like, are there, um, 
are there specific lessons that are available? So let me see. I'm going to refresh my screen here real quick. Sorry. There we go. All right. There you go. All right. Leah, will you try that now? I just refreshed mine to make sure. So refresh it a couple of times and see if it'll let you in there. I'm hoping it does. Um, so how long is an awesome question, but also how much of the patterns curriculum are you implementing? So um, it's okay. And that's one of the things that I love about patterns is, um, and, and Bradford and all of those guys say it every time we're, we're talking about it is, you know, you can implement the entire curriculum. You can implement a unit here, a unit there. You can implement lessons, individual lessons, the, the whole side of this process where patterns is open source and available to everybody is that you can use as much or as little as you need to. And so that's what's really nice about it and being able to do that. And, and since it's free, you're not having to pay for like an entire curriculum and only using part of it. Awesome. And then if we go down to question three, we got people in there, regardless of implementation, what are your barriers? Um, this is, the, this can be gigantic. I mean, truthfully, we can spend a little more time on number three because uh, that is that is the question, right? Like, as I, as I look at all of you, um, that's the question I've been asking pretty much every single one of you since day one of starting this process. Even when back when I met uh, Valerie and Karen and Leah, uh, and I met you guys at, and Bryce, I met you guys in the summer, you know, a month into doing this position and learning about patterns. I, I, like what's the barriers? What's going on? What are the things that make it difficult to implement? I'll tell you some cool stuff that's hopefully coming down the down the pike here, because um, I really do want to encourage you that there's there's changes that we're trying to make in order to make it easier for um, rural teachers to implement patterns. So number one, um, I've uh, through EOU and through GoSTEM, uh, I have. Um, we are applying for more funding. And the funding is specifically tied to purchasing lab materials. Uh, it's specifically tied to purchasing lab materials for rural teachers in Oregon who are using patterns. Uh, and we're, we've already submitted one grant. Um, it's a $50,000 grant. We're looking at some Amazon funding because Amazon has a has a uh, facility in Eastern Oregon that uses uh, that that they use a ton, so you can actually apply for funding through Amazon. So we're also seeking out Amazon. I have a a third grant that I've worked on. Just I just submitted the letter of interest yesterday, and it's another fifty thousand dollar grant. The intention of those grants is truthfully to be able to literally buy the materials and get them to teachers that need them. Because we do know and understand, and I, I know and understand uh, that there is not enough funding in rural Oregon schools to be able to have all the materials that are needed to adequately implement the curriculum. So we're doing that on our own time through EOU and GoSTEM, where we're applying for those grants. We're seeking out other avenues as well um, but that's one of the things. So uh, I saw lab materials on there. Um, and and I, mean, I know, and, and Val can say the same thing. I know that she says that's great news and Skip can, can hear this. Like Val ran into needing force plates, I think is what it was. Was that force plates, Val, that you needed? Yeah, but I got it. You have it. So you, got you had to drive to Portland to get them, but you got them, right? I did. I did. He was really nice though. So, but yeah. <laughs> so, so she reached out to us at GoSTEM because we have a lending library and we didn't have force plates though. So some of the things that we're looking at is how do we build out the libraries, the lending libraries that STEM hubs have, because the STEM hubs 
the 13 STEM hubs cover the entire state of Oregon. So is there a, a way we can have the lending libraries have that stuff available as well? There's a number of different things that we're doing to try to try to juggle this process because we know that it is difficult. Um, so it's really kind of, um, <laughs> it's all Rachel's. I know Rachel was like, I've got them, you can have them. Remember when Rachel was saying that at the other, <laughs> she's like, I have four of them. She's just down the road. Uh, but uh, it's, it is a, it is an issue. Um, so lab supplies is one really cool thing. The other thing that's uh, that I'm working on currently as well is uh, we're working on a request for a proposal for a videographer. And that videographer would be tasked with helping us build interactive labs. Now, what it would be is not just a video lab. We're not just gonna video Bradford doing the lab. What we would actually do is, is record it and video it in a way so that there might be an introduction, right? So there's this introduction that Bradford does for physics in whatever lab that he's doing. He gives us the intro and then it cuts to the videos and there's multiple videos available because a lot of those labs test three or four different variables or they test a variable three or four different times. And so we're gonna actually record every one of those variables, just like they would have done it in class where they would normally split up into groups and that group tests this variable and this group tests that variable. So we would actually do it so that they, it is it is a true interactive process tied in with Desmos even that, that could pull over and do all of the graphing and things like that. It's gonna be a time intensive process, but it's we're really actually excited about it. Um, we want to be able to get this out because this will help this will not only help rural students, um, especially for those labs that you may not have the materials for, you could definitely run this lab. You could do all the introductions yourself and have the lab materials or the, the interactive lab parts available for you. Um, there's some re really, really cool ways. So it would help. That's really good to know, Brian, because <laughs> we're gonna, we have to put out a bid for it. So we're gonna reach out to places that, um, have knowledge on that. So that's a good one. I'm going to write that one down. <laughs> but uh, we want to, so we want to do it for rural teachers, online teachers. This will help absenteeism. Um, students that are absent, you could actually have them like, hey, go in and this is your, this is your process, right? So it's going to help a lot of different students in the process. So we're really excited about that one. Um, but there's a lot, there's a lot of things. Um, class sizes, yeah. So what I want to do, um, it looks like I love that I love that there's this much information. I'm so happy that you're putting this there. Um, you guys don't have to jump to four and five yet. Um, well, yeah, you can jump to four and five. Let's jump to four and five. But I really love that you're filling in that area more than anything because that area is that question number three is the it's the reason we're here. Right, it's the reason that we're here. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down right now. Okay. Real quick, Casey. I don't know if I um, brought this up, but I think a big problem is if the proficiency grading or grade equitable grading, rural schools like I mine in particular, but I think a lot don't use that equitable grading model. So if we could get like a separate rubrics or different or like a, adapt them for rural teachers that use old school grading, that would be great and super helpful. That's a good idea as well, for sure. Well, and, and just so you guys know, some of you are a part of this group, but we have a rural advisory council and and the Rural Advisory Council's entire working group process is going to be helping us with some of these changes. Um, I know Bryce says adjusting 90 minutes to 55. That's one of the things on our to-do list for the Rural Advisory Council is actually adapting the curriculum down to those 45, 55 minute courses. So there's a lot of stuff that um, we really want to, we want to do. <laughs> a lot of stuff that we want to do to help rural and digital access to the program. So um, I love that you're writing so much, you guys. This is awesome. 
Perfect. I'll let you guys keep writing on that. If anybody wants to jump down to four that hasn't already, feel free to finish your thought. Um, and you can add more to this later too. Please feel free to add more to this if you have some, some time and capacity later. So what are your priorities and hopes in this process? What do you, what do you want to do in this PLC? And then the fifth question is what is your capacity for this PLC? I think this is a really important question because um, I, I wanted to do once a month um, in understanding that, you know, for the next few months, it would be once a month as we meet. Um, and it's really because I, I want to respect your time. I, we found this, if you take a, if you ever have the opportunity and you take a look at, at the webinars that are offered, there are webinars offered on Monday nights, Wednesday nights, Thursday nights, like four patterns alone, not to mention all of the other things that you have going on in your schedule, all the other commitments that you have. And so, um, it would be really nice to, I, I'd like to keep it to once a month if that's something that works for you as a, as a group and your capacity, but I do like a, at least once a month, it would be a great thing to be able to do. So, and I want to keep it on a, on the same day as much as possible so that it's just, um, it's more applicable to, um, it's, it's just more applicable is not the word it is more reliable for you as it's going to happen on that Thursday so so I do want to respect that capacity awesome once for fun two times yeah it can be a stretch for sure awesome so what we're going to do I'm going to let you guys kind of finish up we have a few more writing in four and some people writing in five which is awesome what we're going to do first is we're going to jump and i'm going to switch back over here so um what we're going to do in in a in a breakout group is i'm actually going to throw you into breakout groups and i think we'll do groups of so there's two i think i'll do groups of four if i can um and I'll get you out into a breakout group. And then what I want you to do is I want you to share your introducing myself slide. All right. So you're going to introduce yourself to the people that are in your group. And then I want you to share those questions one through three responses. We'll get to four and five kind of as we get towards the end, uh, but share those. And then what are some of the trends that you notice? What are the things that you guys have in common as a group? What are your strengths? What are your ranges of experience? Things like that. So just getting to know the people that you're going to be working with over the next few months. Okay. So um, this is this is where we're going to head. Um, let me, I'm going to stop sharing real quick just so that I can get us into our groups here. Options. start putting people in the rooms here so it'll have you heading out for me awesome So, all right, so we're back from our breakout rooms again. I think um, I think we can truly affect some change. A lot of those things that you were you were you're talking about in the group um, are things that we can they're they're adjustments we can make. They're things that can be changed and and adapted to help make the curriculum better. Um, and we always have to keep in mind that patterns was born out of a need for a NGSS aligned curriculum 
that didn't exist in Oregon. And so they started with patterns physics and Bradford started with that process. And this is built by teachers for teachers. And it's not like, you know, I, I think of open Syed because that's one of the ones that we get compared to a lot. And a lot of people say, well, open Syed does the same kind of stuff. But open Syed has like hundreds of people paid to work on every unit that they work on, right? And for patterns, this is teacher councils, groups of 10 teachers for patterns, bio, physics, and chem that are working to help make change in the curriculum. And so we're gonna get change done. It might just look different. And so I, I, I'm just passionate about the fact that we can affect some change now and start making it better. And, and that's what's kind of cool is literally listening to all three groups just some really good processes going on. And, and I'm a, I appreciate that a lot. Um, I'm gonna share my screen again. We'll go back to our presentation. And I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna jump down a little bit in, in respect of time here, but uh, just wanted to cover really quick that idea of the problem of practice protocol. And um, essentially what a problem of practice protocol is, is it's, it's a just it's a protocol that I'll ask you guys to use as we go through different problems that are happening or barriers of implementation. So um, there's, there's a few roles and the roles include the person who's volunteered to present the dilemma, present the idea or the, the barrier that they're having, the issue that they're having in their classroom with implementation of patterns curriculum. Um, there's a facilitator that's gonna help keep time and respect the process, keep the process on track and then the consultants are the other people that are in the group. And, you know, the facilitator can also be, the, be a consultant considering we don't have large groups of people, but it allows us the opportunity to have people that are the consultants. You can ask questions, you can make suggestions, you can clarify a lot of information for people if there's not a lot of info given. So the preventer, presenter, the steps are pretty simple. The presenter provides an overview of what they're facing anywhere from two to five minutes in time. Um, you're, after that, that overview of the dilemma, uh, the consultants can ask clarifying questions. They can, um, they're, and they're questions that we hope can be answered very briefly and factually. We don't want a, a, a big, long, gigantic answer to this process. Um, we would like hopefully questions that are kind of shorter or briefer factual answers feel free to ask probing questions. So they could be more in depth. They could they could help the presenter think differently about what's going on. Maybe it's a, a question about, have you considered this idea? Or have you considered this process, right? Like um, this is what's helped me with this specific lab, right? Um, so trying to get the person to think a little bit differently about the dilemma they're going through Sorry, I said not. I said make suggestions, but consultants should avoid making suggestions at this stage. So, um, three to seven minutes there. Uh, they discuss the dilemma as a group, so analyze it, make suggestions, um, and then come up with some ideas, some ways that they can they can solve this. The presenter will then summarize what they've heard, how their thinking has changed um, through that process, they'll kind of get what they, they'll summarize what they get out of that process, maybe some ideas on how they can apply this. And then the facilitator is going to do a brief conversation that, um, allows you to kind of reflect on the process itself. Like, was it an effective process? Um, did that one go well? What went well with it? What, what could be improved? Things like that. And what we'll do for the first couple is we'll have you be in the same, groups, like I'm going to keep you in the same groups that that we just went out into, um, but we'll have you be in those same groups for a couple of times so that you can really feel comfortable with that group of people um, and feel comfortable sharing and being honest and being vulnerable. I think that's really important to be able to, to, to be open to sharing in a way that's sometimes vulnerable for us as teachers. And so that's, that's what the problem of practice protocol is. It's just, it's, it provides a really guided way to come up with suggestions and ideas in which to improve a dilemma that's going on. What we don't want to happen and what I would hope the facilitator would, would do in the process in, in sort of leading the discussion is we don't want it to become a gripe session, right? Like I think that's the ultimate thing where we 
And we know what that's like, where we just kind of complain about everything and there's no real solution given. And then we all feel really supported, right? Because they have the same gripe that we have, right? Like they have the same frustration we have. But the goal of this problem of practice is to take it from that gripe session into a, a problem solving session, uh, a, a, a meaningful and and productive discussion of, yes, that issue happens. And you can you can empathize with that teacher all day long. Like that's amazing to do, right? You know, they they experience some stuff that you experience. It's perfectly okay to empathize. But I think that we've got to focus on how do we make those changes? How do we make those adjustments? How do we, what's worked for me that you may have may not have thought of? So um, so that's kind of the, the goal in this problem of practice process that we want to try to do. Um, and so uh, I really want, uh, I, I want to spend a few more minutes um, back in your groups. Um, it's about 5.15ish roughly. Um, and I do want to get you out here right at 5.30 because this is really one of the last things we have to do today in the process. But I do want to go back to your groups and I want you to talk about what the priorities and hopes are for this PLC based on kind of the information I just gave you on the problem of practice protocol and kind of how it's going to look. Because truthfully, as we move forward, we're going to be looking for volunteers. Um, you know, what's your capacity for this group? What can you do to help? Um, and then the other one is <laughs> six and seven down there. Is there anybody excited to present a problem of practice the next time we meet? Um, and then we can kind of pull from each of those three groups. We'll circle who's going to do it. Um, and if two people are willing to do it, we can have both of them bring those problems of practice. You can do this more than once. Um, you can share more than one issue because I know that there are a lot of uh, barriers. So um, that's kind of what we'll look at doing. So feel free to, as I get you into those groups, we'll spend maybe 10 minutes or so. I'll give you 10 minutes and then we'll close up at, at five till. But what are your priorities and hopes? I, let's focus on that one. Um, and then anybody who's willing to do a problem of practice. Does that sound good? Awesome. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. Really right. quick, Casey, um, Go ahead, I gotta get I gotta get on the road to the grant. Yeah. Can you, I didn't see a sign-in sheet anywhere, but I wanted to sign it before I'm in the car because I'm not gonna be able to sign it when you- Yeah, so it. on I the agree. second, on the second slide down on the presentation, there's a link yeah. to a Google form. And that's okay, your... I don't have the I don't have the presentation anymore on the on my chat for whatever reason I got rid of it. I can put it in there for you again real quick. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah. And that should yeah, that should get you just this a second second slide in. There's a Google form link. Yeah, anybody that came in late, um, in order to record attendance, that second slide. Uh, in the in the Google presentation has a link to a Google form and that will um, and that will uh, get us going. So um, yeah, Brian, I'll do that while I get you guys out into those breakout rooms. All right, so I'm gonna open all the rooms again. send you that way.
Awesome. 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 All right. So it looks like we've got everybody back. Um, so I appreciate that. I, you'll notice in some of these situations when I'm going to have you go out, um, like in that situation, I didn't pop into any of the rooms because I really want you guys to feel comfortable sharing. I don't want you to feel like I'm like watching over judging or whatever, because I'm really not if I do jump in. But I wanted you guys to have an opportunity to just kind of talk about what you were hoping to get out of the process without me kind of bouncing in and out of the meetings together. So there will be times where I'll jump in and out, but most of the time I'll just let you guys have your time uh, to be able to talk with each other and problem solve. So um, I appreciate you guys all taking the time to do that. So um, I know in the rural teacher idea, we've got a couple of volunteers in that group. If group three, which was Megan, Skip, and Val, if you guys want to there's anybody who wants to volunteer for maybe next week that'd be awesome um you don't have to necessarily but you won't have a lot to talk about right um but i'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now and then we will um we'll kind of continue on with the last couple minutes so give me a second stop the recording